Hi, this is the Black Bear Prepper, and as promised, today we're going to be talking about something very, very, very important. This is as important as anything else you learn in climbing, okay? Shape of carabiners is very, very, very important, okay? People think that carabiners are just carabiners, but we're going to talk a little bit about what we call off-access loading or reasons we pick a certain carabiner over another. So I'm going to have you come down here to the table. We're going to talk a little bit about off-access loading. So, or tri-loading as some people will call it in certain situations. Now, we have about three different types of carabiners. We have ovals, we have pear-shaped, and we have D's. Now, I'm going to go from strength. What they basically came out with first was your pears. Your pears were great because they handled off-access loading really, really well but they put a lot of weight on the gate. So if your gate came open, the carabiner is not very efficient. So they're very weak when the gate is open, if it pops open because you're rammed up against something. I don't see that as a big a problem when it comes to locking carabiners. So I'm a big fan of auto-locking or locking carabiners that are oval-shaped carabiners. So kind of keep that in mind. Now standard, carabiners when they're non-locking I'm a big fan of D's now what they did is they came up with second they came up with D carabiners basically they said okay what we need to do is take the weight off the weakest point which is the gate <clears throat> and bring it back here onto the spine of the carabiners so they made a D shape the problem with that was it was very um, easy to off access load the carabiner you know to load it in the wrong position so they kind of came up with a middle ground, and especially if you're doing a munter's hitches and things like that, kind of a middle ground here of your pear-shaped carabiners. Your pear-shaped carabiners look like this, where you're going to have the taller upside and the loop down here in the bottom. Now, what is off-access loading? Basically, if you look at the manual that comes with your carabiner, especially if you buy a Rock Exotica carabiner, my favorite, um, you're going to see that anything off your standard main accesses, which is pulling at the best point on this particular carabiner, it's here. On an oval carabiner, it's in the center. On a D-shaped carabiner, again, it's on the back of the spine here. Anything that's in that range is proper access or main access. Anything beyond that is bad. Um, crossing the gates. So if you're pulling, you're actually pulling. So if I'm going to sit there and I'm going to pull up here, and I'm going to pull across the gate. That's minor access, which can limit the carabiner by 75%. So you go from a carabiner that takes, you know, let's say it takes uh, 24 kilonewtons. Now it's going to take, you know, uh, this particular one. Let's see what it says here. It's going to take 6 kilonewtons with the gate open, which is bad. Now, if you look at your... Um, if you look at your oval carabiners compared to your D's and your other carabiners, when they're pulling across the gates, these are actually pretty strong. So this particular one, they beefed it up a little bit to give it a little bit more strength. They'll pull 12 kilonewtons on your minor access. Now with the gate open, and that's what all these symbols mean, so your gate open and holds 6 kilonewtons, or 7 kilonewtons, sorry, with the gate open. So if the gate is open and I'm on my major accesses, on both sides, I'm gonna. It's gonna only be worth seven kilonewtons. Kilonewtons, 225 pounds, of course. Remember, shock loading is where the problem happens. Um, falls of type one, type two falls can actually increase your your uh, fall weight. You know, a 225 pound person falling onto a static load can be upwards of 7,000 pounds. Now that's pretty hard to hit. The average fall in a uh, in a lead climb is about four kilonewtons, about a thousand pounds. So it's not too hard to get upwards of those really bad loads that you need to be able to break a carabiner. And carabiners do break. I thought when I first climbed, I thought D carabiners, especially you know you're dealing with something like this where it's a D and the steel type carabiners, unbreakable. I've come to the belief that that is not true that they can be broken and especially in certain situations when you're setting up slack lines 
when you're setting up um, retrieval systems where you've had somebody fall off a cliff and you're going to pull them back up, especially if you've got two people on the load. It does not take much to pull somebody up and cause some pretty severe damage to your equipment. Now this is what we call tri-loading. Basically this is if I had a tree here that I was wrapped around and I did it in two different colors so you guys could see it, but normally this would all be done with one loop. You wrap it around and then you pull from three different directions. So you're pulling out to your main anchor, you're pulling on your tree, but you're pulling in two separate situations. Now if this was a D carabiner, you're pulling on your you're off access loading the carabiner massively. This carabiner now goes down to, instead of it being like a 24, let's say 29 kilonewton, if you're buying the Rock Exotica carabiners, um, D shaped, they're 29 kilonewtons. So let's say you do that and you're pulling at those two access points, you'll actually shatter this carabiner at somewhere close to half of that, if not 75% less than it actually needs. Now, decreasing the angles will help, but that off-access loading is really, really, really bad. That can actually cause things to break. How do we deal with off-access loading? One, we buy carabiners that are designed for it. So we can sit here and we can put a, um, an oval-shaped carabiner in there. Oval shapes tend to be much more forgiving because they spread the load under, of, over both accesses. So your, your both sides of your carabiner, the spine and the gate, so that even if it's being pulled in a tri situation, it tends to break almost identically with your standard force. It doesn't have any other problems. Now when you get into D's and pear-shaped, we have to deal with which side to put our tri access on. So, or let's say we're setting up a belay station. So I have my belay station here, and now I have three full-size ropes coming in here. Now look what I've done. Now let's say we're setting up to, we used to think the more anchors you put on, the better you've got. You've actually weakened the system. So if I add another set of anchors in here, I'm even pulling even worse on the off-access side. Keep in mind, it's just a leverage point. If I'm pulling right here as normal, and I pull all the way up here, I'm actually prying the carabiner back. And it's way easier to do it with this extra force that I can grab from this extra area here. So if I was to set up a belay station with a pair type carabiner, because I didn't buy ovals, because everybody told me they were useless, I want to put it in the back. So I want to be pulling off the front here. So if you're setting up against a tree and you didn't have an oval, which is what should be used, if you're going to use a basket hitch or any other hitches, you want to make sure that you're pulling off the bottom of the carabiner and then having gate face out. So that's really important. This will actually help. This will, you'll get about a 10% decrease in strength from this particular area here, but it will not be as bad as the sometimes 75%, if not 90% decrease in strength from pulling in this direction. So kind of keep that in mind. Now this also happens when we sit there and we're setting up our personal anchor systems. So we've got our personal anchor system set up. We lock in. You know, we want to make sure that when we're doing that, if we can, we can use an oval carabiner or making sure we're facing the right way. Because look, I just doubled up the force that's coming on this carabiner. I'm able to do that, but it allows, it spreads out the forces across the gate here, which is kind of bad. Ovals are definitely the way, which is why I do not carry, I don't carry D-shaped carabiners in all locking anymore. Uh, I don't think it's worth it. The advantage you get in a straight pulling system is too much of a disadvantage if it gets pulled to off access. So if it gets for somehow gets pulled in this direction, it is very bad for this carabiner. They break it almost nothing comparatively. So when you're setting up your anchor systems, make sure when you're up against the tree, you're using oval carabiners. If you're not using an oval carabiner, you can use a uh, carabiner that has the wire gate on the bottom here that's going to keep it from slipping and going on to its minor accesses. But basically, that's why you really pick the three different carabiners. This came out because it was stronger 
I think this is great if you have a non-auto-locking carabiner. Auto-locking carabiners, I think the advantage goes to the ovals and the pairs. If you're kind of wanting something to kind of be in between, the Jakes tend to be a weaker carabiner overall, but as you can see, they're very much shaped like an oval. So they tend to be less affected by off-access loading. Still, they can be. They're still not as good as an oval carabiner. Now, as always, this is a review class. Go take a class in climbing. We are not telling you, this is not so you can sit out there and take, watch a YouTube video and become a professional climber. You know, this is important stuff to learn, but we want people to see this as much as possible. If you see this and your instructor's not talking about it, make him talk about it. This is an important thing. If he doesn't know about it, take a different class. Okay, off-access loading of carabiners or try loading of carabiners is very dangerous and can get people hurt. Carabiners can break even though we're dealing with, you know, loads. You know, you're dealing with a 225 pound person, then loading it onto, you know, falling as minimal as 12 inches and you can cause massive, massive increases in, in force. You know, a 12 inch fall on a static cable can be upwards of 4,000 pounds with a 300 pound person. So just kind of keep that in mind. Think about those forces they do, you know, just sitting there saying, well, I've got a 5,000 pound rope. Usually the rope won't break. It will be the carabiner that will break. So, uh, you know, that's kind of something to think about. But that's your different shapes of carabiners. That's what's really going to do a lot of, you know, your work for you. You're going to spend a lot of time with that. So keep that in mind. But also go back and watch our videos on um, daisy chains. That's another safety video that I want everybody to watch. Not a lot of people are talking about either one of these things, and it is fairly important. So, as always, this is the Black Bear Prepper. Remember, this is a review. Take a class. This is a safety type situation. But make sure you're using your gear, checking your gear. Like, share, recommend us to your friends if you're climbers, if you're in the in the cope industry or scouting. These are all things that need to be taught to our future climbers. So as always, have a great day.